Hello, my name is Emily Teague. I am a portrait and fashion photographer based out of Brooklyn, New York, and today we get to talk about color grading, which is my favorite part of post-processing. Color grading is really just playful and creative. It can take your images to the next level and bring new life and story into your visuals by conveying emotion. There's all sorts of editing software that you can use for color grading photography, but the two programs that I use are Capture One and Photoshop. I used to primarily use Photoshop for color grading, and in the past year or so, I've started doing most of my color grading in Capture One. So I'll be showing tools from that software in this video, but keep in mind, everything I'm going to be talking about is relevant to whatever software you're using. So starting this off, let's say my photos have been shot and imported. Before I get to color grading, I'm going to do two things, and that is make sure all of my global adjustments are done and color correct as needed. And I mention this because it's important to understand that color correction and color grading are two different things. Color correction is the process of fixing color so it matches how our eyes would see color in the world. This is going to make your image look more natural and is done through tools like your white balance, exposure, and contrast. So this isn't necessarily where you're trying to get creative. The goal with color correction is to balance everything to make it look accurate and neutral. And then when that's done, we've made all our other adjustments, then you can move on to color grading. Some photographers or retouchers will do color grading after the retouching, the detail work is done, but because I'm working non-destructively with a raw file in Capture One, I feel fine doing it first and then letting my retoucher know what adjustments I've made. So we can see color correction as making things accurate and realistic looking, and we can look at color grading as the creative style of that image. This is where we get to be creative, and everyone has different levels of how comfortable they are leaning into color. For this video, I'll be talking about my style of editing, so that's going to have a goal of still feeling realistic, but also cinematic with a sort of enhanced flair. I'm choosing colors that are going to add to the overall story that I'm trying to convey in my images, and the color is helping to set the mood and tone while not looking overly edited. Which leads me to a warning, which is to not degrade the quality of your images when color grading. Oftentimes, if you're using multiple presets or actions, this might be easy to slip into, but really we want to maintain as much information in the file as possible. So now let's dive into Capture One and I'll show you the tools that I use and how I go about color grading. Okay, so I'm here in Capture One and for anyone who's not familiar with this software, I've got all my images to the right and I've got my adjustments to the left. And I also have different tabs up here. I've customized my workspace slightly. So there's some things that I've gotten rid of or some things I've moved around, um, but you can kind of see, so I've got my adjustments right here. And then to the right, I have my color tab, which is where we'll be working a lot today. But starting off, when I look at this image, um, I've already made some adjustments to this actually. This was just kind of playing around, seeing what I could do. So I'll show you before and after. Uh, my before and after tool is right at the top here. So this is, the raw image with nothing done other than uh, rotation. And then this is the color that I applied to it. And this is actually a different color grade than I originally went with, just because I was kind of playing and seeing where else this image could go. But the final version that I gave to my team and is on my website is actually um, much more green and kind of cyan leaning. But whenever I re-edit photos or I go back and color grade again, I always just like to see what my mood is that day. So I'm saying this because it's important to remember that there's no one right way to color grade. You can go in so many different directions and styles, so it can also be good to not overthink it too much. Um, but let's reset this image. So my reset key is at the top left here. I'm gonna hit that. And now we're back with our raw image. And the one thing that I'm gonna do, just because otherwise it'll bother me, is I'm going to straighten this image just a bit. And I will crop in just slightly because this black thing at the bottom left is bothering me a little bit. So those are the only adjustments that I'm gonna make for now. And I think this image is looking really good. So there's not a ton of adjustments that I really need to do. Let's just skip straight to our color grading. So first thing I do is I look at this image and I think, okay, what's the feeling? What's the story going on here? I know for this specific editorial, it was kind of about this Brooklyn party girl who's kind of self-destructive in the way that she's partying and so this is kind of like her night out. She's getting ready to go. She's kind of in her head. And so keeping in mind, that's my story. So where is that color gonna go? So I talked a little bit uh, before about color connotations. Um, and so I know green is kind of a sickly color. So if I wanted to put a little bit of that in there, that would make sense. Maybe if it's a sad story, I might add more of my blues. But before I think about those color connotations, I'm just gonna go to my color balance tool here on the left and I'm gonna move it all about to see what feels best. So I'm gonna take this center point and drag it to the very outer edge of the circle. 
and this is gonna be full saturation. And actually before I do this, I'm gonna change one thing. I'm actually gonna do this on a different layer. That way in case later I decide to lower the opacity, it's not gonna be so difficult. So I'll go to my little plus key here and I'm going to do new filled layer and I'll just call this color and pull that all the way down. Great, so we can now see we're at 100% saturation, very, very purple. For me, I tend to avoid um, the lighter purples when I have a light background like this, just because it doesn't feel very natural to me. And again, I, I kind of want to go for this cinematic but realistic feeling image. So I'm going to drag it all the way around my circle. Blues are looking okay. That kind of cyan green is looking really interesting to me. It's playing really well with the colors that are already in this image. I'm just gonna keep dragging all around. That's fun. I think for me with this image, it's going really back to like the cyans and the yellows. That feels a little nostalgic, this kind of warmer color. And then once I start hitting the reds, this is a color I don't often use um, because again, it, it starts feeling unnatural for me and it starts feeling like something's a little off. So the reds and the magentas generally I'll stay away from. So again, I think cyan is looking really, really cool somewhere around here. And once I kind of move this around a bit to a color that feels good or looks really interesting to me, I'm going to say, great. <laughs> and I'm gonna to go to the left where this little slider is. And this is our saturation slider. So I'm going to take this and drag it all the way down. So if we drag it completely down, we're at 0% again. And because I want this to be a subtle grade, I'm going to bring it up just slightly. Right about there is looking pretty good for me. And you'll notice it's gonna be a lot of subtle adjustments that all add up to make this grade. So this is our master color. So this is the going to be affecting the overall image. Next, we can go to three-way, and this is just a way of viewing our shadows, our mid-tones, and our highlights, which we're about to go into. So I'm going to skip straight over to my shadows. And I really love playing with color and shadows. So again, let's drag it all the way around. And you can see it's a big difference from what we were getting with our master color, that overall grade. And so for me, this time the greens, which I thought worked great for master for the overall grade, I'm not really liking it for my shadows. It's not feeling completely right for me. So I'm just gonna keep going until I get something that feels a little bit better. And I think it might be kind of in these warmer colors just because it does give a little bit of a nostalgic feeling. So that yellow right there is looking pretty good to me. Again, I'm gonna take my saturation slider. I'm gonna lower it a ton. And then the other thing that I have the option to do now that I'm working in my shadows, midtones, and highlights is I have a luminosity slider too as well to my right. And so I'm going to take my luminosity slider and oftentimes if I'm working in shadows, I'll drag it down just slightly. So to show you an example, if we drag it down, we're gonna get that. And if we drag it higher, it's gonna lighten that entire image and really lift those shadows. So I'm gonna pull it down just slightly because I love, I love my shadows, I love my contrast. And that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna lower the saturation a little bit more too. And now we can skip over to our mid-tones. So same thing as before, we'll take that little circle, pull it to the edge, look all around. And I'm also, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how these colors balance together as well. And it's really interesting <laughs> to me that our shadows and our mid-tones and our highlights all look so different, even with the same colors. And I think that's just beautiful. So definitely not those, those purple colors. Blue is looking all right here to me. I think somewhere right around there is kind of cool. So again, I'm gonna take my saturation way down. Oftentimes I won't affect my luminosity when it comes to mid-tones and I'll skip right over to my highlights. So highlights, this is gonna be affecting um, the lighter areas in my image, which oftentimes is skin. So if we drag this all the way to the edge, you can see it's, it's affecting her skin, it's affecting my sky. Um, and so I, I wanna keep that in mind, right? One of the things as I'm talking about not using red and not using magenta, because that doesn't look very uh, realistic and we also don't want red or magenta skin most of the time. So I'm really looking at her face and the sky as I'm pulling this all around. I think something with this cooler color is it kind of looks early morning and that's a fun story to tell. I'm gonna keep going. 
Again, I keep getting pulled to this cyan color. I especially like what it's doing to the sky, if that could be a little more subtle. And yellow is looking fun. Again, yellow and orange feel a little nostalgic to me. That kind of gives like this 70s vibe, which goes with her clothes. But I think it's within the cyans for this, um, which is not common. Normally with my highlights, I'm using a lot of yellow to complement the skin tone. But because this is affecting so much of the sky, I'm gonna go right around there. And again, pull it all the way down. I'm gonna go over to my luminosity and I'm actually gonna pull it up for my highlights. And so I'm watching that. You know what, I just said that, but as I'm seeing the sky go up, I'm realizing that I want to keep my highlights pretty low in the sky. So I've got more detail and it kind of gives a, a certain kind of feel. So pretty close to where it was at is feeling good to me. And I just wanna see what I've done. So I'm going to hold option and click this little arrow, my reset key, to see what I've done just with color. And you can see it's a pretty major difference. So it was a lot more magenta before. Um, this is looking all right to me. There's some adjustments that I would make. Um, one of the things that I would like to change is I would like to just mask her face to make that area a little lighter. Um, but let's stick just with color for now. So the color balance is one tool that I really love using. It's actually my favorite tool for color grading, but we have other tools as well. So next I'm gonna talk about our color editor. And within our color editor, we've got our basic version, which is affecting single colors um, and tones. And then we have advanced where we can go in, use our eyedropper and select a specific color. And when we're doing this, we also have um, this little gradation over here on that triangle. So if we go down to our smoothness slider and we bring that all the way down, it's completely isolating that color that you selected. But if you wanted other colors around it to kind of bleed in as well, you could pull it all the way up. So if I bring my hue all the way up or all the way down, this is a really, really um, subtle difference that you're seeing, but I'll bring the saturation up so you can see it a little bit more and what's being affected. So our sky is being affected and there's also um, a lot of blues within this kind of, um, this silver top as well. So just to show you an example of this, I'm gonna keep it at zero for now and I don't feel like I need to affect that, but. We also have skin tone, um, which I, I don't consider color grading, so I'm gonna leave that out for now, but let's go just to our basic for now and we can see what we wanna play with. So looking at, at the sky, I think that's gonna be right around this kind of cyan color. Let's see if this makes a difference as we pull it. Again, a really, really subtle difference. I'm not sure if you guys will even be able to see this, but once you start dragging your saturation in too, you can but I'm also gonna keep this at zero. But just to know, we've got our color editor and our color balance. And then let's move on to a few other tools. So I'm gonna go back to my adjustment tab. And the tools that I'm using here are my levels and my curves and my white balance. So talking about, I guess let's start with our, our white balance. Um, the way that I use white balance is initially when I'm color correcting, I will make all my adjustments to make it look neutral. And then once I have that all in place, then I can kind of play a little more and use white balance to, to add um, mood as well. So I tend to go with warmth uh, almost always when I'm doing this. So I'm gonna warm this image up a little bit. And again, that's just my unique style on this. That's a little too warm for me. I'll bring it down slightly. And then I'll go down to tint. And with this, I really sometimes will just pull it all the way to one side and understand, oh, that's a lot, wow right around there, what our greens are doing, pulling it up, looking at my magentas. So a lot of color grading is kind of looking at, at the image and saying, how does that feel? And it is based a lot off of feeling. So I'm gonna go a little towards this green side, right about there. That's looking pretty good for me. And then let's skip down to levels. So we've got our RGB channel, and then we've got a red channel, a green channel, and our blue channel. So just to show you guys an example, so this doesn't go on too long, but we've got our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. So our highlights are all the way to the right. Um, because I'm on blue, if I start bringing my highlights in here, it's actually gonna add in some magenta. And then on my shadow side, if I start bringing that in, we're gonna see we start getting some green. And so you can kind of play around through all these different channels and see what you want, um, it, this is looking like a lot for me, so I'm gonna avoid magenta in my mid in my shadows or my midtones. Um, but a really handy tool. And then 
Next one that I'm gonna talk about is our curves. And curves are really great because you have control over the entire tonal range. So with my red curve, for example, I can go anywhere between my shadows down here and my highlights up here and really fine tune it. So I'm gonna drop a point right here on my red and bring that down slightly. And that starts bringing in this really cool um, kind of cyan color. That's really the, the color of the day. And that's looking really cool to me. It's too much. So this is one of those tools where you really have to be subtle, but I'm going to bring it up just slightly. And it's pulled down just a little bit, but even that is making a big difference. So I'm gonna go to my option key and see specifically what I'm doing with this tool. Hold down the reset. And I can see that's a massive difference. It's actually too much for me. So I'm gonna go even higher up and we'll see if that's making a difference. And now it's just a really, really subtle one. Um, I can see that as I'm turning this on and off to see what I've done, I see a lot of it in her shirt. Um, a lot of it is coming in on her pants. So that's looking pretty cool to me. Um, I'm gonna go over to my blue channel and place a dot in my highlights and pull up there just slightly. And that's kind of giving a bit of a dreamy effect. Let's see how it looks pulling down. Oh, and right about there. So here we're getting a little bit warmer and a little more green. And I think for this story, it's working really well. So let's just hold option again, see what we've done. And I think that's looking pretty great. So let's see what we've done to our entire image. And just before I do this, usually when I'm done color grading, I like to fine tune a few things. So for this one, for example, I think that we're losing a lot of detail in her hair. We can zoom on in there. So I wanna bring back some of those shadows. So I'm just gonna to go to shadows within high dynamic range and raise that up slightly. You can see if we raise it all the way. Ooh, we don't want that. Maybe like around eight. That's looking better to me. And then my highlights, that's affecting my sky. So I'm gonna bring that down slightly. And that's also bringing in some more color. And let's just see what we've done to this image overall. So I'm gonna to go to my before and after slider at the very top. This is before a much more magenta sort of image, kind of um, dreamy and light. And then this just gives it a really different tone. And as far as my style goes, again, loving, uh, loving cinema, loving that cinematic look, I'm really liking this. So I would say this is pretty good for me. So keep in mind, there's no one way to color grade. There's no single combination of colors that's always going to be right for your images, just like how there's never one answer to a creative task. Rules can be broken and you can put your own creative spin on things too. Let me know in the comments below if there's colors that you tend to navigate towards when color grading, and I'll see you all next time.